So we're here with Easy Chip uh, here at the Lenara Connect. So hello, so who are you? I'm Bear Spinney. I work for Easy Chip. Uh, Easy Chip uh, about nine months ago bought a company called Tylera that I work for. So a lot of the work I'm showing here is actually on the uh, Tylera based uh, platforms. Which Tylera are we looking at here? Uh, so what we're looking at here is a box called the Liberty Burner, Kyle Extreme. It's actually four completely independent uh, boxes effectively. Each box has got its own discs and 40, uh, four 10 gig ethernet and a Tile 36 chip. So Tile 36. 36. And that means 36 CPUs of the, of, of the Tile architecture. What is a Tile 36? It's a single chip that has, as I said, has multiple memory controllers, a system on a, it's a complete system on a chip with, in addition to, to um, four 10-100 gigs, it has PCIe interfaces, multiple memory controllers, and 36 completely parallel CPUs in the same chip. But it's not ARM. Our next generation chip called the Tile MX is, 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 is very similar, using a lot of similar technology, but we're replacing our own CPU with an ARM uh, chip. 64-bit? 64-bit ARM V8, with all the instructions, all the SIMD instructions, all of the uh, crypto and neon extensions. How soon is that one coming out? Uh, it's going to be the second half of next year. I don't know. I don't have a date. I'm not, not involved in that part of it. But th this one is, uh, what kind of chip is this? It's not uh, ARM? It's not x86? It's no, no something it's, else. it's the instruction set is based on uh, something called the raw instruction set from RAW that was invented by MIT a bunch of years ago. So it is a proprietary instruction set that is used by uh, Telera only. It's um, got a lot of registers, very heavy register centric. It's very, it's very nice architecture actually, very, very efficient. This sounds like a really powerful uh, solution. It is. And have. in fact, I don't know when they, at various times, at various times we have had the highest CPU rating of any box, any single chip in the world. In the world? In, in the world. We've actually had those records. I when, don't know today if we have When did they come it. out? The Tile 36, Tile GX 36, I don't know, maybe two years ago? Two years ago. Something so like that. So you were, you, you have been the maybe fastest two, two chip in the world. At the time we and came out. And now you're going to get over to ARM and, and, uh, and be even years. faster. I, well, we don't know when we come out if, what other people okay. are doing, but we are looking for a hundred uh, ARM, ARM CPUs, each running at uh, you know a very high clock rate. So uh, one hundred core SSC. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah, one hundred cores, and and in addition to the hundred CPUs, it's all wired up using our mesh technology that we had in Tile GX, but also it has all of our hardware assist from Tile GX and a whole bunch of new hardware assist. So in addition to the MPipe hardware, the hardware classifier, hardware scheduler, it has the crypto engines, uh, both public bulk and public key, but also has hardware traffic manager, uh, uh, has hardware uh, counter assist, atomics, it has uh, hardware uh, TCAM, uh, longest prefetch match hardware, hashing hardware, it's got just lots and lots of hardware assist for networking. That's, that doesn't sound like an easy chip, it sounds like a really advanced one. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, there are actually we're now now that we're easy chip, we're actually kind of having to have two kinds of lines of chips, and the, the traditional easy chip, which has just been announced, they just announced the NPS uh, uh, line, which is a 400 megabit uh, interfaces chip, and it's actually even bigger than this chip's going to be. 400 megabit? Uh, 4 gigabit. I'm sorry. 400 four, gigabit. 400 gigabit of capacity, and that's you can buy. You know, we that's gone into uh, production or it's taped out. So that's our Highland line. What that's, is that? Is, is that an ARM or what is that? No, no uh, that's actually using um, a, 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 a CPU called an Argonaut RISC core, which is has been used by other people. It's, it's, it's a standard architecture, but it's not ARM. So that one is really more targeted for very high-end routers and switches and very powerful things. It's actually previous generations of that chip actually were in a lot of the big routers that you currently can buy. You know, it has massive traffic management capabilities, massive data movement capabilities. So the Talera, the, the, the Tile chips, GX and MX, are the, the lower line. They're the, 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 the lower line, but they're more flexible because, because we have an ARM core, which is more uh, easier to program. 
but it doesn't go quite as fast. It's not a 400 gigabit system, it's a couple hundred gig system. A couple hundred gigabit system sounds yeah. crazy fast still. It does, but you know, move, people move fast. So at the higher, the NPS line, they'll be looking at terabit systems very soon. So we're going up to, they're going up to that level and we're going up to the 200 um, gigabit level. Terabit is for very special projects, right? Well again, uh, the back, the backbone, the high-end routers and switches that we're coming up with in the next couple, two or three years. See, a lot of times these chips that we develop at EasyChip and previously Telero, they have, to, they have to be designed in really early into these Cisco routers and, and Juniper and other devices. So, so when, so, what those companies are going to ship in three to four years, they want us to have the chips developed now or in the next year because they need another year or two to build software around it and make a product from our chips. So, you know, we have to be several years ahead of what these huge bandwidths are, and that's what our customers are asking that they will need in the next couple of years. And building chips is not something that's so quick to do to be done. No, no. It, it takes, takes a while. It takes several years. It can take um, uh, anywhere from year and a half to three and a half years, something like that. could be anything in that range. So the, the people in charge of Roadmap have a very nice vision. Well, they know what's going to happen in the future. They have to predict pretty well. And to do that, we, are very, we work very closely with our customers, past customers, and have them help us predict what they will need often four or five years from now. And they, we work with their roadmap to try to guess what our roadmap should be. So you're going to make an ARM processor with a whole bunch of, uh, you said mesh, you said some hardware. Mesh is just a, w a wire of connecting all the, the arms together into one unified whole. That's like the cache? It's like, no, it's cache coherency yeah. and also the interconnect that connects all the cores to common memories and common subsystems and accelerators so everything can be, so there's common communication. That's what we call the mesh. And then you said some accelerators. You have a bunch right. of accelerators in there. Yes. And this is uh, the this, this special sauce you bring into yes. to, to these. And uh, what, what are you showing right here? So what I'm doing right here is I'm actually showing um, a traffic generator again running on one of these uh, these one of these independent boxes. Two different traffic generators sending in traffic. Each one sends in 20 gig over two 10 gig ports into a another box running my latest ODP implementation. So I just recently wrote a Tile GX ODP native implementation. By native, I mean that it's from not a port of something else. It's built from the ground up to work with Tile GX hardware as efficiently as possible. It's not just you know porting slow speed software running on a, a generic Linux. So what I'm showing here is that with my implementation running a standard application, uh, ODP application like either L2 forward application or OVS uh, in, in 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 L2 mode, I'm showing. I'm trying to show that I can get 40 gig in and 40 gig out through my ODP, an ODP, a real ODP application running on top of my ODP code. So the ODP application and the ODP in general is, is kind of like this new movement, right? Yeah. And this is a big deal. It's changing a yes. lot. Yeah. And it's it's working. It's useful. Yes, that's what I'm. Well, I don't know if it's it's not production yet. I mean, I'm just showing a demo of it because it's not fully implemented, but I'm showing that the, the key point is, A, we actually now have a real ODP implementation doing real ODP running real applications, and B, that it runs very high speed, and C, that it's not just a port, from some, a quick port from somebody else, it's built from the ground up for our hardware, optimized, optimized to our hardware, and built around our hardware, so it's, it's a real, it has the potential to become our production quality, real shipping ODP implementation for TouchX. How hard is it to uh, make software solutions that are s crazy optimized for hardware? Uh, it's hard, but it's basically what I love to do. That's my specialty. That's my secret sauce, or that's what I try have, have tried to um, focus my career on. I always like to say, you know, if something needs to go really fast on any hardware, whether it be specialized or not, that's a project that I personally love to work on. I don't want to be porting, you know, lower speed applications on generic Intel box or anything. That's just not my interest. So, you so don't I love like, it. You don't like bloatware. You don't like uh, no. I want things to go fast. I want super things to go optimized. Fast. Yes, I love doing fast things. Do you like ARM? Oh yeah, yeah, it's nice. So, so yeah. this implementation will be moved over to our ARM chip. As time as we as time progresses, once we you know, so it's it's not just going to stay on GX, but we have to 
change a, you know, some number of the things of it to, to make it work on the Max. And some things will run on the ARM and some other things on the hardware accelerators? Right. And, uh... Yep. And that's my job to figure out that split. And you know, we don't always tell our customers and how the world how we split it, but obviously we want to make sure our hardware is getting its maximum visibility and benefit for the customer. So what have you been doing uh, in the last in your career? What what, what do you do? Um, a lot of things. Um, uh, going way 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 back, I was involved at DEC at the um, something that probably nobody remembers, something called the GigaSwitch, which at the time was uh, I was one of the principal architects of, which was 36. Uh, 100 megabit per second FB, FDDI connections into a single box. And that box was used, in fact, at some point, uh, uh, like I think half of the traffic in the eastern or western US went through that box. Really? And through one box? Went through one box. When was that? Oh. Around. I know, I gotta remember my time scales here. Give me one moment. It was. I guess. 94, 96, something in that range. Beginning of the web, right? Oh yeah, it was early, and we were we were the only game in town. The, the, our competitors only had, you know, either you know two or three ports, and we had 36, the 34 or 36. And we had, we so you had ahead. one box running half of the U.S. internet I, web uh, through the back, the, through the uh, the core of the network. Yeah, that's what I was told. I never actually visited it, but this box was very, very high end. What was the company you were? That was Digital Equipment Corporation, DEC. Big, big company, obviously, yeah. DEC. So I worked in the DEC Advanced Development Group uh, for many years in doing that project, and it was called the GigaSwitch, and it was revolutionary at its time. And then later I went and worked at some stuff for ATM, for four systems, and then I spent about 15 years doing my own startup, uh, which was doing security, uh, denial service, um, all sorts of security things. Denial of service at the end, IPS, IDS. Uh, eventually it got bought by some um, uh, European company. They took it a different way. And, um, and What's the name of your startup? It was called Top Layer Networks. All right. So, uh, and here you, have you been to Lenaro Connect before? Last year I was here. So what do you think about these Lenaro people? <laughs> nice, <laughs> they're a very bright bunch. And uh, there's some discussions going on? Uh, uh, the things are moving fast or? Uh, it's like, uh, yeah, they're moving fast. I, I could always, use, could always like to things move. Anytime you have a consensual process and an open process like this is, and the community process, it's going to move slower than what I'm used to. Where I come from, a world where it's not as consensual, it's not uh, open, and it's not as um, you know community based. So you, know, we you, you basically decide everything. Well, sometimes I've been on bigger projects where we do have to argue about it, but it's all within the same group. So you can move faster that way. So, so it's a little slower than I'm used to, but on the other hand, it's moving, I think, as fast as it can, and hopefully it will keep to How it. can it move faster? I don't know. That's don't what know. I'm saying. When you have open source, consensual, community-based projects, they're just going to, they just have to move slower than a proprietary, internal, company-only thing, typically. Can we see some stuff on the screen? Yeah, I'm, let's see what I have here. I'm not sure what I have, because I was running it before. And what I'm showing here is, it's not that interesting. So basically, I kick off the traffic generator, the two traffic generators, and I kick off the ODP code, and I'll show you what the ODP thing looks like. So when I run the ODP, um, I'm running, you have to wait a second until I go back here, but I'm basically was running something else. So here's a typical run. So this is running, um, running, this is how, when I run the uh, L240 application, it, it's what it puts out, every line puts out how many packs per second, max, number of packets dropped, it puts out every second. And that number is just a pack, max packet count. So what I do is I correlate it by looking at the, my stats. So this is an example of stats. Um, let me move the back a little bit. For that one. Um, so what this program is, this program is something we call MPipe Stats. And what it does is it shows for each of these ports, X should be one, two, three, four, which are the four ports here, it shows the total amount of packets being uh, transmitted, the number of mega, uh, gigabits transmitted, and the amount of packets received and gigabits received. So you can see it's starting up here, being both traffic generators, and then it, it hits its peak performance here. And if you look at this range, they're all the same numbers. It's all basically 9.9 .9 gig, 9.9 .9 gig received, transmitted, and about eight, 800,000, and that's per interface. So that's proving 
that we're really getting this performance and I'm not losing anything and I'm really keeping up with this traffic level. So um, in, in previous uh, shows, we've actually had uh, a GUI back in that actually had meters and showed you things that was more graphically rich. For this show, we, I just didn't have time. To, I, I was doing it all myself and I just didn't have time to do anything graphically richer than this. All right, so there it is. Uh, faster internet is really important because people want more bandwidth. Yes. And uh, ODP and the uh, Linaro, LNG, and your new crazy fast chips are going to make that possible. I otherwise, hope so. yes. Otherwise, uh, there, there might be a bottleneck and just the, nobody's going to be able to stream 4K videos. Exactly. It's going to be an issue, but hopefully yes. not. All right. Ho hopefully, we'll be there. We'll be ready for when the industry needs us.